The focus today is unfortunately an 11 point loss in round number one for the five seeded Wisconsin Badgers as they lose 72 61 to the 12th seeded James Madison Dukes. James Madison, look, I, I fully underestimated them. I downplayed their ability to play quality basketball, I downplayed their strength of schedule. I thought Wisconsin would win probably by 11. Just like James Madison did. And ultimately, that was a game in which the Badgers got punched in the freaking mouth and never responded. Never responded. Would they have five points in the first ten minutes? I mean, it was it was an embarrassingly bad effort by the Wisconsin Badgers. They looked like they didn't wake up. And, and by the way, that game was at like 9 p.m. locally, 10 p.m. Eastern. Looked like they had gone to sleep already for the next day. It was it was a horrible game for the Badgers. And it's what has now become the normal expectation in the NCAA tournament for the Wisconsin Badgers that they're going to get punched in the mouth by a lower seed and lose early. It's been seven years since the Badgers have made it to the second weekend. So all the smack talk that we as Badgers fans have done to Marquette the last seven years of, oh, you can't make the second weekend. Sorry, we're the new Marquette. That's just the matter of the fact when it comes to the Wisconsin Badgers in the NCAA tournament. They can't get to the second weekend under Greg Gard. The effort, the energy, the inability to respond to adversity in that game against the 12th seeded James Madison Dukes Flat-out unacceptable. There is no way you can spin that game from Friday night for the Badgers and say, yeah, proud of their effort. Yeah, they beat Purdue the week prior. Guess what? It didn't matter. The Big Ten tournament, they look like a good basketball team. The NCAA tournament, they look like they belonged in the freaking WIAC. And that's no knock on the WIAC. I love the WIAC. Yeah, be careful. But that's Division Three, And Greg Gard obviously has a background in Division Three and the WIAC. But I'm pretty certain with the effort his D1 Big Ten basketball team put on the floor on Friday night, his D3 teams from back in the day could have beat the Wisconsin Badgers on Friday night. That was as flat-out bad as I've seen that team play in a year where they played flat-out bad quite a bit. You remember that Rutgers game in February where they go on the road to Piscataway and get run out the gym by a team that didn't belong in the NCAA tournament, didn't make the NCAA tournament? They lose by 22 in that game at Rutgers. That's the same team that played Friday night in the NCAA tournament. Those guys weren't ready. And it's not the first time we've seen this either, which is the disappointing part and the embarrassing part as a Wisconsin Badgers fan. To bring you behind the curtain prior to this show, from noon to 1230, I was on a meeting as we were you know, talking about some specialty programming we'll have coming up because it's the 10-year anniversary of that first Final Four team under Bo Ryan for the Wisconsin Badgers, a team that was terrific at responding to adversity, by the way. The, these last few teams for Greg Gard and the Wisconsin Badgers, once they get punched in the mouth, it's a first-round TKO. And that was the case Friday night. I, I never felt like they were in that game. Second half, I never felt like they were in that game. And, and that's the disappointing part. We're live with you on ESPN Madison's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter pages. You can chime in on, on Greg Gard, which we'll get to in a second, uh, as well as TikTok. Hello, Nolan. Good to see you. Uh, somebody is very excited about Arizona's potential in the Final Four on TikTok. That's why I love TikTok, man. We're just going to talk about whatever they want. Uh, but we need to talk about whether or not Greg Gard is the guy for the Wisconsin Badgers. And I'll start it with this. I have long been a Greg Gard apologist. I have long been a maybe the biggest Greg Gard defender. I have long said Greg Gard is the guy for this job. The fact that I'm even questioning whether or not that's still the case is probably your answer. I don't know that now's the time, but I don't want to be one of those people that sits here and says, yeah, he needs one more prove-it year. Because if you need one more prove-it year, once again, you probably have your answer when it comes to Greg Gard. And that makes me sad because I think he underachieved. His team's underachieved. 
makes me sad because I think he's a great coach. I, I think he has a spot within college athletics as a head coach. I think he can be a really good head coach in college basketball. But as I say all the time in the NFL with players, maybe it's true with Greg Gard here in college hoops, and that's sometimes a change of scenery can be really good for somebody. And looking at the fact of this is a five seed, if they lose to Duke, right, and looking at what Duke did to James Madison, who did what they did to Wisconsin, right, they beat them by double digits. James Madison beat Wisconsin by double digits. They led the entire game. It was never close. I mean, it was at some points, but it was just very embarrassing. You never felt like the Badgers were going to win that game. There were maybe some points in the second half where I went, okay, but now you got to keep this run going in order to feel even pretty good about your chances, and, and it just didn't happen. But to see Duke do what they did to James Madison, they won by 40 points. It was 93-55 to 55 yesterday in that round of 32 game. That's what Duke would have done to Wisconsin, too. So, all in all... The answer is simple, unfortunately. And that is sometimes you need you need a change of scenery and, and you need maybe a different leader in, in in the locker room. And I mean you can hear it in my voice, right? Like it, it pains me to say it, but I think it's time to move on from Greg Gard. Well, you know, I think I was listening to the Duke James Madison game while I was uh, driving back from my parents on Sunday. Yeah. And the first thing that got brought up when Duke went on that run early and really put that big lead up early on in the game, the first thing that gets mentioned is the fact that it looked like John Shire actually scouted James Madison properly <laughs> yeah, yeah. and knew what they were doing, unlike Greg Gard. Yeah. So the fact that the conversation nationally automatically from that game started around Greg Gard not having his team ready to go mm -hmm. for the NCAA tournament, the one point in this tournament where you know exactly who you are playing and you have multiple days to be ready for them and you can't scout them properly to know how to beat them, that's really, really bad. And I've been like you, Strofe. I haven't wanted to see them pull the trigger but I, I just think they need to. It's feeling like Paul Christ again. It's just feeling like the energy isn't there, yeah. and there's just there's no reason to keep going with this. It's it's disappointing though because look, and, and obviously you know, it it sucks because Greg Gard is a good human being, right? And he's done so much for the Madison area, and he's done so much at UW during his time as an assistant, now the head coach for the last several years. He's a good dude, and I think he's a good basketball coach, but. You can't do this time and time again and have no accountability. And I saw a comment on, on TikTok, somebody watching along with us on the ESPN Madison TikTok, saying UW basketball needs to have the same standard as UW football and UW men's hockey. And look at what those programs did when they made leadership changes over the course of the past couple of years. Chris McIntosh, the athletic director at the University of Wisconsin, he fired Paul Chris midseason. Now, I am often in the camp that no coach deserves that, especially one like Paul Christ who had been successful. But I asked him the night Chris was let go. I asked Chris McIntosh at the press conference, why now? Why is the timing now, Chris? And he said it was, it was over a conversation him and Paul had the night prior. Paul understood that a change needed to happen. And another good guy who was a great coach for a lot of his tenure at Wisconsin. But he accomplished more than Greg Gard. Paul Chris did. He had Wisconsin in Big Ten Championships games, which Greg Gard has as well. But he had them in national conversations consistently. He had great defenses and good offenses and, and constantly competing in the Big Ten until he wasn't. And that was the final straw. Chris McIntosh fires him in season and about a month later goes and makes debatably the, the biggest hire in terms of attention and energy and, and big swings the university has maybe ever seen in Luke Fickle. And while season one wasn't perfect and all sunshine and rainbows, it's hard to turn around a program. Um, and I think Luke Fickle will ultimately be a great hire for the University of Wisconsin. Men's hockey. They move on from Tony Granato. They go get a guy that we now call Magic Mike, who has them in the NCAA tournament, a first-round matchup coming up this weekend for the men's hockey team. So to only have two wins in the NCAA tournament, since they made the Sweet 16 in 2017, 
it's just unacceptable for a program that should be nationally recognized, that should consistently be top 25, that should consistently be one of the favorites in the Big Ten. Bo Ryan was an amazing coach. He made the NCAA tournament every single year he was the head coach at Wisconsin. He, he was top four in the Big Ten almost every year he was at Wisconsin, if not every year. 20 wins was the standard. And, and that's uh, 20 wins is not a very high bar, by the way. I think the Badgers are 22 this year, 23. I, um, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see when slash if the change is made. I I honestly don't believe it will happen this year. I don't think it will. I think if it would have, I think it probably is already done. And and maybe that comes today or tomorrow, but that's a decision you make either this weekend or early this week. And and maybe those conversations haven't happened yet. But I I would vote if if I was a betting man, I would guess Greg Gard is the head coach next season. But as David chimes in on the YouTube chat, it's it's got to be a big tournament run or bust next year, if if guard is back. And like I said, I think he probably is. But the fact that I, it, it, look, I, I'm not putting myself on a pedestal, but Hunter, you know as good as anybody, and as well as anybody, I, I have long defended Greg Guard. Yes, I, you have. I, I, I have always defended Greg Guard, and I I have always thought he is the guy that can take this program back to a Sweet 16 or an Elite 8 or a Final Four because I do see that potential in him. But how long is too long? And after an embarrassing exit in the fashion that it was, and this is not the first time it's happened under his watch, you have to start asking the question, can Chris McIntosh do it again? Can he go out and take a big swing in terms of his replacement? You know, I think one of the other issues as well, and I've seen it pop up on the YouTube chat here, is the fact that the team that went to the Sweet 16 with Greg Gard, they were Bo Ryan's guys. Like, those were his recruiting yeah, classes. But hold on, hold on, but, hold on. But, and, but Greg Gard was an assistant coach, so he's part of that recruiting class. Yes, and that's why he, those guys stayed there. But he wasn't the guy that was in charge of that and setting up and saying, this sure. is the direction we're going to go in. And now that he has been that guy... We've seen what's been happening. And we, yeah. we just saw it, Xavion Mitchell, this last week. Great player from Oshkosh North. He goes and he commits to Iowa State. To who's the head coach at Iowa State? Uh, well, he used to coach high school basketball here in the state of Wisconsin. He was born and is a high school yes. graduate. T.J. Otzelberger is the head coach at Iowa State. So it's a name. By the way, he's in the Sweet 16. It's a name. I'm, I'm not saying it happens. I'm just saying... If there is a name, and if there's a guy that makes sense, who has proven his worth at a smaller university, who has not been renowned as a good basketball school over the years, fine basketball school, that name might make sense. It's Luke Fickle-esque in my mind. Uh, just looking around uh, some of the chats, and appreciate all you chiming in here, Mr. Irrelevant. I'm Alex Stroff. That's Hunter Vaughn, producer Tiny Hands, Marquette fan. He's, he's feeling a lot better than I am today. Uh, SDN40 says, rumors the buyout is $22 million. Uh, I believe I read $12 million for the buyout for Greg Gard, which is about the same amount it was for Paul Christ. They were able to negotiate Chris down a little bit. I think it was down to 8 or $9 million. Um, and I would, I would imagine maybe that conversation hasn't happened yet, like I said. And, and Joseph says the same thing. I truly wonder if Garden McIntosh have spoken yet. Oh, to be a fly on, on the wall in that room. Sure that. 